The authors of the chapter in Gendering Competence, which is the assessment-focused resource within the book Diversity and Motivation, one of our key references, offer the verb esedire as the root for assessment. And in this, they link it to the idea of sitting beside, sitting in council, watching over and assisting, being present as a supporter, and invoking the idea that assessment is a place in which teachers, peers, and learners can indeed sit beside the learning that's going on in a classroom and offer feedback, can sit beside and suggest ways of applying the information in new contexts. We'll use this as a foundation for the next short three videos focused on assessment. These three videos addressed educative assessment, formative feedback, and summative evaluation. We'll continue immediately in this one on educative assessment. D. Fink, in his book on significant learning, offers two schemes to help us understand assessment. Auditive assessment he invokes as backward-looking assessment, whether or not and how well students can remember, recall, and apply material that we have covered with them or for them in a class setting. He links this to traditional grading, to the tradition of having several large tests that can measure whether or not students have retained, can apply, and think through critically materials. In contrast, Fink poses the idea of educative assessment as something that's forward-looking, in which the assessments ask students to apply materials at different levels and at different points in the class. They may be asked to remember and recall in order to set a foundation for next level assignments that will ask them to apply the learning to a real world or authentic scenario, situation, case, or task, and which will be assessed based on criteria and standards that are included in the assignment, in the description, in the aims of the course. Educative assessment also includes self-assessment, where the learners look at how they've done in particular assignments. What have they learned? Could they have changed their learning practices? Did they gain some new strategies? Educative assessment also reminds teachers that feedback includes several factors and not just the grade. These are the supportive matters. Aspects then of forward-looking assessment compared to auditive assessment are these. It feeds forward. It gain, engages students in practice with seeking, offering, and evaluating feedback, whether they seek that feedback from themselves, from peers, or from teachers. Educative assessment is criterion referenced whenever possible. And when the criteria are set, these are shared with students through rubrics, through descriptions, through aims. In all, educative assessment is meant to provide a basis for growth and for grading. Thinking through our four A's, I'd like to move into an example of a way to think of assessment and plan for it across several assignments that include forward-looking assessment with opportunities for students to practice their learning. So in the class that I'm thinking about, I want all students to be critical readers in a new discipline. That's the general course atmosphere. My aim is for them to be able to describe what they're reading, to describe particular aspects of articles, to describe how they're beginning to understand a concept. My activity I've chosen is a focused list, something in our CAT matrix uh, resource available with this uh, segment. And my assessment will be to ask them to create a ranked list. Let me show you what this will look like. The aim is to describe why and how learning theories advocate critical learning. This is a higher education course. We need to think about learning in order to teach. And I want them to understand not just how somebody describes critical learning, but why it's an important concept for teaching in higher education. As a classroom assessment activity, I ask students to come to class having generated focus lists based on their reading notes. They share these with groups or they can share them in a forum online. Everybody in their group sees everybody else's list. The assignment that they will complete, either in class or online, 
is that they will compare and consolidate their list to synthesize a top three um, characteristics, whys, hows about critical learning, include two examples of the critical learning practices that are advocated under each of these top three why hows. The group will share this document with a link and they'll answer some questions that I pose to them in the final evaluation, questions they've had all along. At the evaluation stage, I will review the list from all my student groups and respond to the question I've asked them. Why not the other options that they've listed in their individual writing for the top three? I will respond to the group, or perhaps I will read all of the group's responses and respond to the whole class. I might do both. What I've done here is I'll hopefully sit beside students along the way. In the aim, I've given them materials that I want them to understand with a goal of being able to articulate for me the practices that they would most advocate for critical learning, given them an opportunity to really focus on these and generate and compare it with other practitioners from multiple disciplines to think about critical learning, come up with a top three characteristic list with some examples so I'm seeing how they apply the concepts, and I'm also asking them why not others, some discernment. In doing this, I've provided opportunities for frequent feedback. They're able to do some self-assessment by looking at their own notes to generate the focus list. They get some immediate feedback from their peers in small groups as they talk through why the things are on their list and how they're going to come up with a top three. They're able to discern um, between what they're choosing and what they're not choosing. They engage the work with their future work. The feedback is local, perhaps to the individual if I see someone struggling, perhaps to the group in order to say how I see their uh, decisions working in their teaching context, perhaps to the whole class. They're integral to our next step is to apply the learning theory and it helps them transition into teaching. 